His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the spiritual master who knows the absolute truth, arrives on time in a blue Volkswagen combi van. The members of the Hare Krishna sect are the first coming, for the press just another Indian mystic, and for the Pennington mob another curious visitor. His Divine Grace founded the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in 1966, but it said his disciplic succession can be traced back directly for 500 years. According to his followers, he's the divine representative of God, and he's completely pure. Basically, the movement he heads is austere and exclusive. Alcohol, tobacco and sex, other than for procreation, are frowned upon, and diet is strict and simple. Disciples surrender everything they own when they join the movement, and they survive on money from publications, donations, and they say Krishna. <coughs> God or Krishna is all pervading. From his energy, uh, the five elements, material elements. The history of the movement, they say, can be traced back 5,000 years when Krishna first spoke the truth in India. These days, the headquarters are in Los Angeles where, according to one member, there are more frustrations. But today they say the most perfect person in the world is in this Paddington flat, and the 50 members of the Sydney branch are ecstatic. Today, say the disciples, is a day of rejoicing, of peace, love and humility. But behind the facade there's some conflict and some sadness. Cheryl Zimmerer is 18. She tried university and a job in Treasury before leaving both to join the sect a few months ago. Today, after her initiation by the spiritual master, she says she's found true happiness. But her mother and her aunt are not so sure. For them, the ceremony represents an alienation from the type of life they hope Cheryl might lead. Well, I'm not happy with it. I don't go along with it, but it's her life. It's what she wants. So uh, my husband and I make the best of it. What worries you about her being an Her issue? future. Her whole future and the fact that they're teaching them that there is uh, not to have sex. Um, I came here last night and the um, spiritual master was telling them that to have sex is like animals. Yeah. Well, this isn't the way I've brought my children up. To hear this sort of thing, I'm wondering what her future is. She's given up university to do this, given up everything, she's not working. And uh, I can't see any future in it at all. Well, what's been happening ten years' time? Uh, what, you, what religion are you, can I ask? Church of England. And you feel that... Uh... She's been uh, christened, she's been confirmed in her own church. And she suddenly turned to this all in a matter of two months. What do you think has attracted her most of all about well, this? Well, she's been looking for something. She's an introvert and she felt she's wanted more out of life than what she's been getting. And, she's obviously uh, getting it, isn't she? Because she's, her uh, ideas, she seems very happy that she's been here, yeah. doesn't she? Her ideas coincide with these people's ideas. And I think... Um, they're very good living people, they're very sincere in their ideas, but they're not my ideas. This is one of the things you, you don't particularly appreciate that frustrates No, I can't see the point of doing this. So why do you in fact frustrate yourself like that? Well, it's a sign of humility, like the spiritual master, he is the, a, a messenger from God, an associate of God, he's actually Krishna's friend, God's friend, and this is why um, we bow down to the spiritual master, because spiritual master is giving us, you know, this knowledge how to, how to go back home, back to Godhead, back to Krishna. Like, um, it's sort of, it's just uh, so potent in the world. Like, we have 52 temples all over the world today. Your, your mother is, is worried that, in fact, that all the things you're saying uh, are largely due to brainwashing. Are you worried that she's worried? I guess I'm worried that she's worried, but I don't think she should be. You know, because you can see that, you know, there's peace and happiness there. You know, completely. Um, everybody has one goal, and you know, there's no no um, sort of uh, uh, bad relationships in the temple. People realise that we're all spirit souls, all part of Krishna. Do you feel she could have spiritual and, and happiness and peace with herself without doing this? Then? Of course. I, I thought that this is what she was getting at home. I mean, we love her very much at home. She's been brought up um, to the Christian religion. But uh, there just seemed to have been something lacking somewhere. This is a very hard question, but if, you're, if you, your parents, wanted you to come home and perhaps ignore all of this and 
perhaps get married like most normal 18 year old girls, what would you do? What? They wonder me too. I'd say, oh, I'd say I can't because, you know, we're all spirit, soul, and we're only on this, this lifetime. This our lifetime is like an eye wink in the eternal time. So, you know, we have to try to um, go back home, back to Krishna as soon as possible. But there's no other bona fide spiritual master. This spiritual master is pure. You can tell just by association that, that he is pure. Um, you can find out for yourself by association with him and ask you to believe you know, that he is pure. Just because he's, he's such a pure soul, a lover of God, he's completely devoted to God. So Krishna says, you know, if you, if you serve the spiritual master, well then it's just like, just like it's better than serving, serving me. You know, it's better. Krishna, Krishna would rather you serve the spiritual master than he would to serve him. Because the spiritual master is the friend of Krishna.